Hello, everybody. Let's see who is here, who's with us here this morning, seeing attendees just starting to come in. Good morning to everybody as you're coming in. We're so glad to see you here. Love for Zoom to take just a moment to bring everybody in. And as you're coming in, please do say hello. We're gonna, we love to see who is here. If you have a moment, please do open that chat box. I'm gonna open it and drop hello so that it hopefully pops up on your screen. Please, would you just take a moment and drop in the chat box, let us know who you are, introduce yourself so we can get a sense of who's here live with us today. Let us know who you are, where you're based, who you write for, what kind of stories you do. And also, if you have any particular um, insight to let us know what you came here for today, like what you're hoping to get out of today's session. Um, we're gonna have plenty of time for, um, for questions throughout today's session, but it is helpful for, for all of us to know who is here. And we will get started in, in just a moment. I, hey, Sean, I see, hello, Sean from Open Up. We make civic tech tools and we help build this as a lottery tool. We're gonna really gonna get into the lottery tool today. So I'm really glad. I think that there are some other people coming in from Open Up as well. Hello to Lee, hi to Shock um, from Outza and anybody else who's just coming in, you can see those, those names here. It seems like there might be a couple more people and uh, more good mornings. And yeah, I think we were, look, we have, a, we have a few more people that we have um, scheduled to come in. So I think we'll just hold on for uh, another 20 seconds or so, but we do want to go ahead and get started because we have so much material to cover. And I will just say um, a little bit early that we, we will, of course, be sharing a replay of today's session with you, and we will have time for questions. I think one of the big benefits of a session like this, doing it, watching it live, is to be able to interact. And um, our panels today have such a wealth of information. We would really love to be able to have you interact with them live, perhaps bring some of you on live on camera to ask your questions as well. Hi to everybody else who's just coming on. As I've just been saying, if you haven't yet introduced yourself in the chat, please do just drop in into the chat and let us know who you are, where you're based, what you're hoping to get out of today. Um, I see Lee has just introduced himself as well. Um, I do YouTube explainer videos, spend a lot of time going through PDFs for useful data, keen to learn new skills. And we're totally gonna make sure that that happens for you here today. I think it's time for us to go ahead and get officially started. So I want to say a big welcome to everybody who's here for today's training on reporting on the South African lottery. We said that today's session is geared for mainstream lottery and absolutely there will be some very key takeaways for those of you who are with mainstream media, but there's also going to be a lot of relevant info for those of you who don't identify as being part of the mainstream media, either that you're with sort of do community journalism or you're in some other aspect of the media or interested in other interested in this work for other reasons. And also, although we absolutely are going to get really into some of the nitty gritty about reporting on the South African lotteries, you're also going to get a lot of insight into these tools, how they work, and how to apply them to other kinds of investigations as well. So we're going to be looking for those takeaways for everybody, regardless of who you are and why you came, um, and looking for how to apply these tools in ways that makes most sense for you, your readers, your listeners. We're going to be looking at how the investigations into the South African lottery were conducted by the journalist presenters who are here with us today and how they use these tools to expose corruption that ran into hundreds or is still running into hundreds of millions of rands and how you can take the same tools um, both and apply them into your own reporting. So civic tech nonprofit Open up SA has built a bespoke search tool and it has been used to scrape 18 years worth of National Lotteries Commission's annual reports that were in PDF format, very difficult to use, and that info is now transparent and much easier for you to access. It's pretty simple for you now. Check which organizations receive grants, how much, when, all those kind of details, and you're going to get that hands-on understanding here today, as well as tips and insights about how these journalists went about the reporting and have been able to combine both the data journalism aspect with more traditional on the ground reporting to bring real depth and context to their stories to expose what has really been happening. I am so excited to be able to present to you two amazing panelists. We've got Anton Fonsell from the Limpopo Mirror and Ray Joseph from Roundup, both 
have won multiple journalism awards for their investigations into the lottery. That is why they're here today to present this info to you. I'm Rebecca Weber. I'm a journalist based in Cape Town, and I'm your moderator here today. I'm going to stop talking in just a moment, and I'm mostly going to have my eye on that chat. And I really encourage you to make use of the chat. Drop your questions in the chat as we go along. If you've got a question specifically for one or the other or both, put those questions in there. We will answer some of them as we go along. And we also have some dedicated time at the end. As I mentioned, some of you we may want to bring on, bring your camera on, or turn your audio on if, if, if you're able to and get that real discussion going um, so that you are able to get the most out of today's um most out of today's training. Now, the situation with the National Lotteries Commission is obviously not unique to South Africa. This is a global phenomenon with lottery corruption. And so to give some international context, we have got a short video for you from Jeff Kelly Lowenstein in the United States. It's real early there. So we're um, going to watch this video and then turn things over to our presenters who are here live today. Let's get let's take a quick look at this video. Sorry, just sharing my screen. There we go. Hi, I'm Jeff Kelly Lowenstein, uh, founder and executive director of the Center for Collaborative Investigative Journalism and the Padno Sorosic Endowed Professor of Civil Discourse at Grand Valley State University in Michigan in the United States. Uh, very grateful for the opportunity to share a few thoughts, kind of an overview of the global lottery industry investigation that uh, I've had the great privilege and honor of working on with Ray and Adi and uh, lesser degree Nathan. Nathan's been tremendous and uh, Anton Ponsail uh, and the rest of the crew at Open Up and uh, the South African contingent. So I just wanted to give a brief overview of the global aspects of the project. Obviously the biggest and most impactful work has been done in the face of great obstacles uh, by Ray and, and the crew over there. But um, Ray and a number of other folks and I came together in 2016, and we wanted to show the international dimensions of the lottery industry more than just the workings of a specific state or national lottery. So uh, if you go to our website, gamingthelottery.org, I'll just share the screen here. This map here gives you a feel both for the countries that we covered the, the different elements that were central in those particular countries' investigations, uh, and, and more broadly, the truly global scale of the project. So um, one of the points that we wanted to get across, I had done a certain amount of investigations into lotteries while I was working at the Spanish language newspaper, the Chicago Tribune, is that there is a structure, there is a organization to this experience that people have all over the world of scratching off lotteries or buying different lottery tickets uh, every single day. And so the work in Switzerland looked at the World Lotteries Association, um, which is a nonprofit association uh, heavily funded by the, the, the global behemoths. There's about eight uh, countries that are extraordinarily active and in many, many countries around the world. Uh, one of them in South Africa, uh, GTEC uh, or Ituba. Um, and so this story looked at the existence and the, the activities and the apparent contradictions between the World Lottery Association's pledges of good behavior and uh, commitment to concern for the players, while on the other hand, promoting uh, the companies getting together and lobbying and, and uh, the companies working to extract more and more money from the world's lottery players which study after study has shown disproportionately are poor folks, often poor folks of color. So that was in Switzerland. Um, this talks about the, one of the companies, IGT, formerly GTEC, um, which has avoided hundreds of millions of dollars in taxes. So on the one hand, uh, basically carrying out a regressive tax on poor people, and on the other hand, then avoiding hundreds of millions of dollars in taxes. Um, in Mali, there was a very interesting piece about by David Denbele about how the a ruling political party, rather than using the money for good causes, was actually using it to keep itself in power. Uh, here's that story right here in Depeche du Mali. 
uh, in French. Uh, the, the, the Swiss article was in German. And then here in Bolivia, uh, there was a very interesting piece by Freddie Clayton talking about how uh, the, the lottery used these tickets, which you can see playing on cultural and spiritual indigenous uh, tributes of gods of abundance to try and get basically poor people on the whole to, to buy more lottery tickets. So that's, that was that story, um, which came out in published.org, Ray had a connection for us there. And then within the United States, uh, we built on previous work talking about how um, there were winners uh, in states across the country where they won dozens, hundreds, and even thousands of times. It's just utterly in inconceivable odds. And so uh, the, the theme of gaming the lottery is that in many different areas across the country, people are essentially rigging or gaming the lottery. Uh, last month, there was an indictment of uh, two players in Massachusetts, my home state, uh, on tax fraud and money laundering, an alleged scheme for more than $20 million. They just won thousands and thousands of times, year after year, a father and two sons. And then on, they also said that they uh, didn't have money to pay taxes. So that was some exciting impact there. And then the last thing I would mention is that Ray, uh, John Alsop, a British journalist and former student, and I did a, did a piece last year for World Politics Review talking about how lotteries were using the pandemic to expand online and some of the concerns around that. So I will stop there, uh, but that's just a brief overview of the global dimensions of the lottery. It truly is a massive industry, almost $300 billion in revenue each year and the various different angles that we've pursued at different points and obviously that Ray uh, has continued to pursue along with the support of Nathan uh, with tremendous impact and, and uh, consequence, Anton von Sale and uh, Adi and open up the folks as well. So thank you very much for the opportunity and hope the session goes well, bye. Great. Well, I think that you probably all got to hear a little bit of how to taste of the sense of the collaboration and we're gonna explore that theme a lot more here today. As you're hearing from Ray and Anton, you're going to hear about the collaboration. We really encourage you to make use of them and help them get on board with your stories as well and to um, make use of their expertise. And to that end, please do go ahead. If you haven't yet, introduce yourself in the chat box. Let us know who you are, kind of things that you are most keen on finding out today. And as we go through, please do drop your questions into the chat so that we can get you the kind of specific help that you need when wrestling with this information. We have a lot of great stuff to cover. I'm going to turn things over to Ray to get us started. Oops, I'm going to ask you to unmute Ray. Oops, you are <laughs> you're muted again, Ray. Does that help? That's it. Yep. Okay. Okay, so so um, we all met at we all sat down and kind of spoke about this. We'd been speaking about it for a while, and at the VIT um, Power Reporting Conference, which is now ARJC, a whole bunch of us from around the world got together and spoke about how we would go forward. We turned the idea into reality. And I was very excited about South Africa and, and I got home and it was like a bath of cold water when I suddenly realized that what I was dealing with is at that stage, 16 years of PDFs. So PDFs are where data goes to die if you don't know how to extract the data. Um, and, and Lee, you were speaking about, about data, everything in the tool, the source data you can download from the tool, it's all there. Um, Anyway, um, I got into conversation with Adia Yal, who was then the head of Open Up, um, and he suggested we build a tool. So we had no money. We had no money to do it. It was a side project. And he suggested that we build a tool to make it searchable. And we used the free version, the vanilla version of Tableau, in which um, Adi, um, Daniel Lopez, 
Roxanne Joseph, they scraped all those years and years of data, cleaned it, ingested it into the tool, and suddenly it was like being in a dark cellar and someone threw the light. And, 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 and the data became keyword searchable. You were able to search it. Um, but then what started happening is the more data we added to the tool, the more it slowed down. Um, and we, we, we then, um, the Indigo Trust um, gave us a grant to rebuild the tool and to do, to do, these, to do this webinar. And, 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 from, and, and that's what we will be talking today. The new tool, we, it's, uh, it's much more robust, it's quicker. We've learned lessons, we've added additional tools that we use in the tool. And um, yeah, so, so that's where we are. It's been, it's, been a long, it's been a long, long road and we're all committed. This won't be over until it's over. Hundreds of millions of rands intended for the poor have gone missing through corruption, fraud, maladministration. And yeah, and just a quick shout out to Nathan, uh, to Nathan Geffen at Ground Up, because without his support, I would not be been able to do this. And then Anton, who sits in Limpopo, who is guards the real estate inside his publications jealously. He only publishes news about the area. The whole of South Africa, the one area where there's a hell of a lot of corruption going on is within Anton's circulation area. The, the people who are doing it couldn't have chosen worse. So Anton has shone a light on it there. Thank you. Okay, thanks Ray. Okay, I'm uh, maybe just to add on to what Ray said, I'm sitting in the northernmost sort of part of Limpopo. Why a lot of these projects actually sort of fall here, I don't know, but uh, well, so be it. Uh, let me start off and say that, yes, um, my presentation today is from a very sort of uh, self-centered approach, deliberately so, because that's what community journalists do. We just care about the area, which in our case, we distribute our newspapers. Um, but this is also where the tool comes to, uh, into its own, because with our tools like this, uh, we fairly much lost with all the sort of data. Um, I'm going to start off on, like on the very basic sort of showing how, we, uh, how I've specifically uh, gone about to, uh, to find the stories. And I think from there, it would also assist uh, the others. Now, okay, if I'm correct and right, just check and so I'm sharing the right things. This is what the tool looks like. Um, the interface, I think it's like, it's easy to follow. It's the little blocks, I call it tree maps. Um, and you'll first notice there are different sort of colors, um, apart from the different years. Now, the different colors, um, the yellow sports and recreation, arts and culture, uh, the blue, the charities, and uh, the green miscellaneous. Now, each of those different uh, types uh, supposed to have a uh, distributing agency or a DA. Now, within the national lotteries, these distributing agencies are a group of what is supposed to be independent people sitting and then deciding on all the applications for funding that they get from NPOs or NPCs. Uh, they all have got a certain allocation according to a percentage. I'm not going to go into too much technical detail uh, about that. Uh, if you want to find out about more about that, you can explore the NLC's annual reports. For the purposes today, um, it helps if you if you look at it and you see, okay, well, there's a sports project, so it will be under the yellow, uh, etc. Um, unfortunately, in 2018, 2019, uh, the NLC did not uh, disclose the various categories uh, when they made the names of the beneficiaries available. So that's only black. Okay, the easiest way for me, and I presume also someone coming from, let's say, uh, uh, from Sorry, a community Anton, journalism. May I just say, I yes, just say they welcome. made it available after Parliament forced them to. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> okay, now, the, uh, obviously in a case like mine, uh, 
I would start off with Limpopo and you can go on to a year as well uh, and I'm going to use 2018 as an example uh, quite a nifty little tool is to just hover over this and it'll show up all the big uh, sort of projects and now this is where you know you need a little a little bit of know local knowledge and uh, for instance you would look for names that ring a bell in this specific case uh, you know Chimbupe is not far from us I'm gonna go I'm just gonna use Google Maps and quickly because I doubt if many of you have heard or sort of even uh, sort of you would know where Chimbupe is uh, Chimbupe is a typical sort of small uh, uh, village in the the form of Enda uh, and uh, I don't think it's you know a lot of the projects you would find in places like that okay I'm just gonna uh, just for a bit of perspective to show where uh, Chimbupe is uh, the closest big town would be uh, Toando with Lutrihat on the other side um, and you know, I go out a bit wider that's Toando there and Lutrihat there it's really in between poor area um, yeah it's a place where development is sorely needed uh, any development uh, job creation projects back to the tool okay so using a tool like this uh, you know you can spot projects there are lots of smaller projects as well and uh, you know worthwhile going to Fulanani uh, is all in our areas so a lot of those uh, there's some old age homes um, but these are small amounts and uh, but again from a local journalism perspective I for, for instance started off looking for the good news I wanted to write about some upliftment projects and this is where the whole project actually started unfortunately what we found wasn't really such good projects um, it turned out to be quite uh, disastrous back to the tool if I have now let's say I decide okay Chimbupe actually want to find out a bit more of them and then I can say okay let's see how much uh, in the past few years that Chimbupe I can start typing and there will be three Chimbupes but I'm specifically concerned about the drop-in center okay so Chimbupe drop-in center received 10 million rand from the lotteries in 2018 Four, uh, 4 million and another 6 million in 2019 2020 so obviously you know this is you think okay well it's, it's wonderful let me let me find out so we sent someone to Chimbupe and uh, unfortunately what we found out wasn't uh, such a wonderful thing let's now let me go back to some of the photos Okay, and Ray, you need to, to tell me if I'm on the wrong slide here because I can't see it. Um, we sent someone to Chimbupe and the whole team, and now that's the treasurer, uh, Ms. Dorcas Ndo, and found out that most of that committee had no idea uh, that any grant. Uh, was given to Chimbupe uh, drop-in center in fact what we found is that they applied uh, a few years before that but were turned down because they were dormant and they didn't have annual financial statements which is one of the prerequisites in getting funding anyway we did the story um, the councillor well, it's sort of the ward councillor is the chairperson uh, of that uh, drop-in center uh, when we first sort of uh, contacted him he recalled yes they did get 10 million but it was apparently for a water project in a neighboring village well we couldn't find that either so I mean I want to now move on to that's uh, one of the projects it's actually later I want to move on to some of the uh, projects that we did before that uh, we investigated and uh, Sort of show you how to well how we managed to actually get to them. I'm just going to uh, clear all the filters and get back to uh, the uh, the main sort of search part. Uh, also, once you start writing 
about a project, suddenly it's as if information starts flowing to you. And the first one we did was about Vembi Health and Fitness and then follow, uh, followed Denzi Primary Care. And suddenly just a lot more information were leaked to us or people were saying, well, but we, uh, we saw that old age home there at Myla Village, but nothing is happening and there was an NLC board. Don't you want to go have a look? Um, and obviously that's what you, you need to do because you, you're the watchdog. That's your, uh, that's your responsibility. But back to the old age homes. So we uh, heard about uh, an old age home uh, not far from here at Myla Village. Uh, it's at Mashumu Ushawa's one. I think I've misspelled it. Let me just go Mashumu. Mashumu Ushawa's Wanda is another project we looked at. Okay, and this one got 27.4 million. Again, had it not been for the tool, it would have been extremely difficult to find, to, to see the bigger picture. Um, I'll go back to some photos and, and to actually show you over a course of three years what we found there. And at first, you know, you, you, try and, you, you look at it and you see, okay, something's going to happen. And then you, you eventually realize not much is happening there. Uh, let's go back to, I'm going to show you some like really terrible photos. When we first visited uh, this old age home, um, 2019, it was already dormant. At least there was still a, a signboard of the NLC in a half upright state. Now, Myla Village is another of like the very sort of poor places in, in what used to be rural Venda. Okay, that was 2019. A year later, 2020, now uh, but by that time the, the sign has gone down. But it was just getting worse and worse. There was still building rubble lying around there. Um, and uh, but it was in a, like starting yes. to rot, it's decay. And then last uh, in 2021, early this year, by now the windows were all broken, the building rubble, uh, like the bricks that was, yeah, I go back to, uh, there were some bricks lying in 2019, all of those but by now long gone. And that was it. You know, 27.4 million literally down the drain. Now, I'm going to deviate slightly from the tool just to put some perspective because, you know, people sometimes don't understand the reason why we follow up uh, on all this. This is money supposedly meant for good causes. And if you look at Myla Village, um, I did a story about a year ago looking at Myla Village specifically, looking at the census figures. I think this is, these are the latest ones available. They're a bit outdated, but you know, it's, it wouldn't have changed much. In that uh, village, there are 6,816 people or 1,900 households. 13% indicated they've got zero income. Um, the majority, 5,700, indicated they still use a pit toilet. Only 116 said that they'd have, they had access to a flush toilet. Okay, also the concept of an old age home, it's not familiar to a place like Myla Village. Old people do not get put in homes. Old people get catered for by the families. Um, you know, the, I, I'm yet to come across an old age home in uh, the, the rural areas in the form of Enda or the Gazankulu. You know, you, you might find centers, old age centers, but not old age homes. It's just a, a strange concept. Now, 27.4 million has been spent. And just a quick calculation, obviously you wouldn't do it like that, but it's just to put it in perspective. I mean, there are only 444 residents, so 65 years or older. So dividing by that, you could have given them each 61,000. Now the average house isn't, it doesn't even cost close to 61,000. Um, they could have upgraded houses, build water tanks, sink more bottles, uh, and build toilets for everyone. So, yes, um, it's sometimes terrible in terms of it, you see what the result is and how much money gets wasted in an area where money should not be wasted. I'm going to go back to uh, 
the tool for another. Um, I showed the, uh, the option to explore the NLC's annual reports. Now, if you click on that, uh, it'll take you to uh, the NLC's website. Now, there you are able to, to download the various years' reports. Now, let's say in the case where I now focus on the old age homes. Um, it can be quite useful to download the, the report or go to that uh, page uh, and to see what references they've got in the annual report. I mean, obviously, if they spend so many millions, you hope that they expand and they explain a bit more. Now, just as a bit of a side uh, sort of remark, uh, on this page, you'll always also get a, a list of beneficiaries. Um, but if you click on that, it'll just take you to um, the previous one. Um, so interestingly enough, it doesn't really... So Anton, <laughs> could I please explain what happened yes. there? Um, so what happened is in 2018, the National Lotteries Commission published the list of beneficiaries. It was, lit it was up for a few days and then they realized, so they were trying to hide stuff from us and they took it down. But in the period that they put it up, we got a copy. Subsequently, they gave, they were forced by Parliament to hand over a list of beneficiaries. Um, but yes, they, 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 they were trying to hide it. They put it up and they took it away. And that's why that one doesn't work. I do believe that in other years you will find the list of beneficiaries. But having said that, it's all in the tool. Thank you. Okay, back to... Okay, I find to me what the easiest is to just download the integrated report rather than sort of uh, go around there. And uh, you would then get like this 119 pages and uh, uh, sort of wonderful, really well done explaining what they do. But I'm just going to do a search for old age homes there. Uh, let me just spell old age correctly. In any case, there's old age homes. I'm going to just make it a lot bigger. Um, and so, yes, you know, you'll get a bit of a uh, sort of a short piece about what they spent. Uh, in that year, they uh, proactively funded 20 projects, uh, 284 million, which included six old age homes. Uh, Ray, I'm going to sort of now sort of go over to you. Uh, I don't know if you also want to maybe explain uh, the difference between proactive funding and the normal funding process. But I'm going to stop sharing then to, for you to continue there. Uh, Ray, you're muted. So it's around 250, give or take a few million. The numbers are so vast. Um, and it was for six old age homes and for four rehabs. Now, when we asked the National Lotteries Commission where they were, they didn't tell us. As Anton has said regularly, the National Lotteries Commission is as transparent as a toilet window. It's very difficult to get information out of them. Um, sorry, I just want to, how do I pull this down? I just want to pull this out of the way. Just want to do that. Not sure how to get my slideshow going. Uh, bear with me a second. Um, sorry, I seem to have turned my cursor into a pen and I'm not sure how. Apologies. Uh, Becky, can you help me? I've turned it into a pen. That I don't know. That's probably some PC thing. Um, if there's anybody who quickly can help Ray, we'd love to hear it in the chat. Um, I know there's a lot of tech people on here. Other way, okay, Ray, I've got it. I've got, got it. it. I've got it. I've got it. So, 
So there we go. So yeah. So we spoke about proactive funding. So there was an amendment to the Lotteries Act that was promulgated in 2013. And it introduced this concept of proactive funding that provides the NLC may upon request by the minister what its own initiative or in consultation with the board conduct research on worthy good, good causes that will be funded without an application. So that's the key to it. It is not application driven. They decide on a good cause and, and, and give money. And in this case, it was old age homes and um, rehabs. Um, 284,872,000, but now it's more, um, because the in, in, in succeeding years, they got more. And of that, um, I think there was, there was almost 90 odd percent of the total of proactive funds went into infrastructure projects. Um, arts and culture charities is the big one, 57%. And, and what we have discovered <laughs> is that a lot of the corruption and fraud has happened around these proactive funding. The checks, despite what the, AN, what the NLC says, the checks and balances are not in place. Um, so the first thing that we discovered um, was Denzi primary, primary care. It just stuck out in, in the old tool. Um, what we discovered was a dormant, non-compliant NPO that had been used to get funding for rehab near Pretoria. Now, it looks very pretty here, but I can tell you the doors don't fit, the windows don't fit, the roof leaks, there are no gutters on it, the, the interior, there was supposed to be a full kitchen, there was supposed to be equipment, none of that was delivered. So from the outside, it looks great. On the inside is a different story. <coughs> what is <coughs> this? Ha this is now subject of <coughs> litigation. Four years later, this thing is not being used, and it's unfinished. Um, we then searched for other lottery-funded old-age homes and rehabs, and what we found was shocking. Now, how we found the other ones is using Google Advanced Search rehabilitation, old age homes. <coughs> and I eventually came across a document where the National Lotteries Commission has put, put out a tender for signage outside the old age homes and the rehabs. And there was a complete list of the rehabs. Old age homes. So this is what Anton has just shown you, Limpopo. January 2021. Um, Kuruman, this one is still not finished. Um, so that 23 million rand now is closer to, I think, 27 and a half, 28 million rand unfinished. One of the things that we did find is the stop and start that was going on <coughs> was that they kept running out of money. And, and, and small, um, small businesses that had done work, the electricians, um, bricklayers, individuals weren't being paid. And so people kept leaving the site and then money came and they would go back and they would do more work. Um, this one is, this is, this is in Mpumalanga, um, unfinished. So that's, um, so, this is the only one we have not found. It's somewhere, I think it's in Bochabella, but what I did find, so, so the point being the tools do the heavy lifting, you've still got to do the journalism. Just like Anton's reporters went out on the ground, you know, the tool will tell you where to look, but then you need to go and look. Now, this was a video that the National Lotteries Commission put out quickly when we started writing about unfinished old age homes. And, and there you can see it in three years after they got money. There it is. They're still working on it. This thing is not finished. Um, this is another one in Northwest. This is a hijacked where a dormant NPO 
was literally so so either so what we believe is happening is as happened with my uh, as happened with Chibumfe, people applied for lottery funding and they were rejected down the line so when you apply you've got to submit um documents about the your your nonprofit i i am um, ID details for everyone, it's, it's uh, bank account details, et cetera. Those in some cases were used. And in other cases, I believe that there is someone or more than one person inside DSD who are spotting dormant NPOs, which are then being used. Um, there's got to be collusion inside the bank because they are then opening up separate bank accounts and Jabub there. The money never reflected in the account of that NPO, but a new bank account was opened at a completely different bank. Um, this one in KZN, so this is inside. Um, from the outside, the, the facade, it looks like it's finished, but the moment you go inside, it's, it's unfinished. This is about 25 million drug rehabs that's kuruman that one is still not finished Pumalanga, still not finished and this is an interesting one uh sorry this one is soshenguve i spent an entire day looking for this in soshenguve and was unable to find it um what i did find on link on the national lotteries commission linkedin was um I, um there was a post about the center and there were all these important people and journalists and they brought them there to introduce them to the place. It was a beautiful picture. What they'd done is they'd almost finished one of them. And, and the photographs were taken in that way, but you can see the windows are being stolen, the doors are being stolen. Uh, this is another 28 grand, it's overgrown, the fence has been stolen. And Denzi, four years later, is still unfinished. So where did the money go? So we, we have received a lot of leaks along the way. You know, once we got going and once people realized uh, that we could be trusted, we started getting a lot of document leaks, a lot of tipples. So this is one of the very fancy estates outside Pretoria, country estates. You'll find that a lot of tenderpreneurs, lotopreneurs are moving into these gated estates. So Leslie Rombolifo, who is an attorney with a very checkered history, um, used money from Denzi, which is unfinished. It was about five, six million rand to pay for a house on a luxury estate. And he also paid for two ocean basket franchises. Um, and then again, this was another. Uh, this was from um, Marapanya in, in Mpumalanga, the old age home there that is unfinished. A board member of the National Lotteries Commission, who is still in his post to this day, um, five million rand came from money, money went from the National Lotteries Commission to the NPO that was supposed to be in charge of that, that one and, and bought this luxury, five million rand went towards a luxury house. And years later, not a single old age home or rehab has been completed or is operational. Um, now, just very quickly, what I do need to explain to you is COVID became a really big problem because I spent a lot of time, Anton was covering his area, I was covering the rest of the country. And I went on the road and quite a few of the pictures you see I'd taken. But what I had to do is kind of invent a new kind of journalism where if I couldn't get there, I still needed to see with my own eyes what was going on. And what I started doing is working, I Googled for N, uh, NGOs, nonprofits, NPOs in the area. Um, because that's where you're most likely to find activists who are going to help you. And I then identified people who would go to the different uh, projects. I would find them, I'd tell them where it is, 
and they would then go there and take photographs and videos. So my second prize, even though I wasn't on the ground, I'd photograph and video that I could see with my own eyes what was going on. Um, thank you. Um, and John. Okay, Ray, thanks. Um, I want to uh, get back to uh, the tool and uh, latch on to what Ray is now uh, saying that once you've identified certain what they refer to as lot of reneers, um, you can use a tool very effectively. Uh, let me just go there and uh, look for further links. So let's now, for instance, you mentioned uh, Leslie Ramulifu. Uh, a search for Ramulifu indicates that he's involved in several other uh, NPOs that receive lottery funding. Now, uh, there are two that I want to uh, list now, Dennis's and then uh, Zipsy Fusion. Now, just while that comes up, a lot of these NPCs are shelf NPCs. I think Ray will expand a bit on that later. These are literally, you go to uh, a company that specializes in shelf uh, companies and you can buy an NPC and the next week you can apply for lottery funding and a few weeks later you can have a you know, tens of millions in your account. Um, Zipsy Fusion and Denesis, in between them, receive 20 million. Uh, now, if we just click on you know, the Denesis 10 and Zipsy Fusion 10 uh, million. Again, if you click on it, unfortunately the, the black ones don't give uh, as much detail because the lottery didn't provide that, but some of the others would give you the project number uh, and, the, uh, and, uh, and where it actually took place, where the project was uh, supposed to be completed. Now, we then established that Subdiffusion and Dennis uh, had a, received that 20 million to, for uh, uh, basically uh, rebuilding toilets, to getting rid of the old uh, dangerous uh, pit toilets and replace them with either ventilated pit toilets uh, or much more modern uh, type of toilet. We then started following up on that and uh, let me go show you a few uh, pictures because in Limpopo obviously we've got a huge problem uh, with pit toilets at schools, very dangerous and a lot of the uh, court cases from, uh, among others the ones that section 27 made against the uh, education department focus on that. So we then found out that <laughs> very few of these toilets were built. Uh, in the first instance we went to Waterfall which is not again not far from uh, Yelm and not very far from the previous photos I showed you of Myla Village and uh, uh, of Chimbukfe. Now as the luck would have it for uh, the NLC, um, the week prior to us actually starting to follow up on this uh, toilet uh, story, there was a demonstration at Waterfall High where the pupils were complaining about uh, the, the lack of facilities. So when I then realized, but you know, Waterfall uh, High is also on the list of uh, there were 10 schools identified who were supposed to receive these toilets. Uh, and, uh, you know, it begged the question, why are they then sort of demonstrating? I mean, they supposed to have a state-of-the-art new toilets. We then realized that nothing like that happened. Um, a few people arrived there and, you know, a bit of paint and uh, replaced a door or two and that was it. You know, at an average of a million rand per school, that was a bit excessive. Okay, the long and short of it is that, no, um, very few of these toilets, I think we could at the most trace three of these toilets uh, that were built, the blocks, and the other schools, it was a combination of either they haven't got to that school and, you know, I don't, I, I suppose they thought no one would check. Um, I also used uh, that example in the story to say, you know, if you've got 10 million for a Limpopo, it could have made a huge difference in an area that desperately need uh, that. You know, based on what they said they're going to build, not what they did, based on what they said uh, they're going to build, um, toilet blocks would have cost 572,000. You know, 
per seat, 62,000. Okay, now, the, if you look at what it would really uh, cost, you know, uh, we got a local contractor to quote on building such a toilet. You know, it is, I mean, it's just, it's 47% more than even the educational department in the uh, official estimate said it should cost. Basically, thousands of more children would have uh, been spared the need to use undignified and dangerous pit toilets if the money was spent properly. Now, also, I'm going to go to the last example. We, and I'm going to go back to the tool um, uh, from that, and onto that, we, uh, there was another of Leslie Ramulifu's uh, uh, NPCs that received a lot of money with the uh, ironic name of I'm made for God's glory. Okay. And I'm just going to see I made for God's glory. That's the one there. I made for God's glory received 11.375 million in 2018. Now, in just those three projects uh, for Ramalif was 31.3 million, and that, there are numerous others as well. I haven't got a total calculation of what MP, uh, O's and NPCs where he was involved uh, received, but it must be 60 million plus. Anyway, it took us quite a lot of time to find this project because the NLC is extremely secretive. They do not want to tell you what the project was about. One would think, you know, they only said it's sort of a sports project, a sports project in uh, Limpopo, and we knew that it was not far from, it was in our distribution area. Now, you would think that if you spend that much money on a, uh, on a project, you would be proud of it. You would showcase it. You would display it. This is not the case. It took us over uh, two years to find it. Uh, when we did find it, <laughs> we found that it was effectively a stadium that was already built. The stadium was built several years before by the, uh, uh, the, the local municipality. All they did was put a bit of paint on and I didn't even, you know, there you can see the swimming pool. That was when it was supposed to be just finished. The guy, uh, the, there were no fences or the fences were broken and you know it begs the question what checking mechanisms have you got if you can spend that much money and nothing happens okay this is another one uh, we did i want to end off just with a quick thing and say okay you know according to this article south africa lost 1.5 trillion to corruption in five years um, i sincerely believe it's a lot more in this is a quote from a Sunday Times article. Uh, Ramaphosa told the commission chairperson, and that's it's a state uh, capture commission, uh, that he had not been aware of state capture until it was exposed by a journalist. You know, and to me that is a very shocking, almost a scary uh, uh, statement that it is back to journalist. Well, not back, maybe it was always there, but it's up to journalists to be the watchdogs. It's up to journalists to expose whether it's a digital vibes or whether, and in this case, the lotto uh, has been continuing for, for many years. Now, personally, I regard people who play the lotto as just ba uh, being bad with mass, you know, but uh, I'm very concerned about the money because it's a type of a tax where you tax is stupid. I want to say totally stupid. Some people do it for enjoyment. I don't know why. But uh, the, that money is supposed to be uh, used for good causes. And uh, it's scary if it's only left to journalists to do that. Uh, again, that, uh, from a personal point of view, that's why I'm grateful for people like uh, at Open Up that goes through the hassle of scraping the data and assisting people like myself and several uh, of my fellow journalists here. I mean, a lot of the stories were done by ordinary correspondents coming from rural areas um, who did so much work on exposing the rot. Uh, because for them, it's also personal. You know, we live in these areas that so desperately need uh, the development. And it makes you extremely angry if people waste this. Um, but the tools like this lot of tool help you to, to find it. And again, we're looking for good news. We're always looking for the good news stories. Um, and we, we use these tools for good news stories as well. Thanks, Ray.
Thanks, Anton. I just want to um, reiterate, reiterate to everybody, if you've got questions for Ray or for Anton, to please go ahead and drop those into the chat. We also have that ability, if you want to raise your electronic hand or just say in the chat that you want to come on and talk with them, either to understand more in depth what they've done and how they expose what they did or how this really applies to you and the kind of stories you know your readers, your listeners, your viewers better. Um, please go ahead and make use of this time here. We'd love to, to hear what's on your mind, what's coming up for you. I'm gonna please go ahead and make use of the chat. I'm gonna turn things back over to Ray. Ray, can you um, unmute yourself, please? I'm gonna click the ask to unmute. Do you see that? Thank you. Thanks. So, so I'm, I'm now gonna get into the weeds and show you the tools that we use. We use quite a lot of free tools um, because not everyone has got access to CIPC databases. I, I'm very fortunate in that ground up has, has an account and I can get into CIPC, which has got very extensive stuff in it. Um, but if you don't have that, you, they, they are other options. So, so this is the anatomy of a lottery scam and bust it. So it began with an investigation to 4.8 million lottery grant for an event in Geberga, um, which was then Port Elizabeth. And I was just going to, so I regularly just go through the tool and I, I look and you start knowing what to look for. Um, searching for NPC is a really good place to start. Um, as Anton explained to you, shelf NPCs, um, literally, it doesn't even take a week. They're, they're the shelf, they're, they're <coughs> it's, um, attorneys, um, accountants set up in, um, set up set up companies, nonprofit companies, private companies, etc. They get them tax compliant, and each year they will report. They 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 will report even if there's no tax to pay and no income, they'll report no income. And you can literally go and buy one of these off the shelf. Um, the former head of the of legal at the National Lotteries Commission, who's no longer there told me, uh, when I asked him about this, he said to me, in principle, you can set up, a, uh, you can set up an, uh, um, a non-profit today and you can apply for money tomorrow. Now, what the Lotteries Act does say is that you've got to have two years worth of financials. And, and the workaround there is, if you don't have that, you can find an NPO that is in good standing to apply on your behalf, um, that does have the financials to apply on your behalf. The problem with that is when the lottery, <coughs> when the lottery lists who got the money, they, they give the name of the conduit, but not who got it right at the very end. Um, what we've been able to do very effectively is to get information is, um, using parliamentary questions, which is something that journalists have used forever. You know, any investigation that you've got, find an MP who will ask a question on your behalf. Um, it's very, very effective. It's very quick. Um, so, so we found, <coughs> I, so that was the story. When, when I went looking for information on this um, NPO, which was called Voice of Triumph, what I found was a Facebook post. And in that Facebook post, they thanked two people, Pastor Joylin Josamo and Mr. Zola Key. And at this stage, I want to say to you, there's lots of tools at your fingertips. Facebook, you can deep search in photos. You can deep search in Facebook. Go and dig around about. It'll give you a lot of information about the MPO. You'll find phone numbers. You'll find when it was set up. You'll find contact details. 
it's it's really good. Twitter's got a deep search, and then Google Advanced Search is also very good. So you know these are things that we are using day to day, and I don't think many people realize the forensic and the investigative potential of it. But quite literally, I did the story. So that, this concert was literally a one night event of which they probably, we counted up the actual expenditures, probably about a hundred thousand Rand. They blew 4.8 million Rand on this concert. Oh, and, and they had a two week workshop at which um, they fed the participants and they, they paid for their transport. No stipends, nothing like that. And at least 4.7 million Rand had happened at the time that the, um, the ANC had, had, had taken over in, in then Port Elizabeth. And the new mayor, was very involved in this concert. The municipality were very involved. It was a publicity event, but certainly 4.7 million Rand could not be explained. They paid 12,000 Rand to hire the venue. You know, it doesn't make sense in the context of how much. So I went to Facebook and I found these two people named. I then searched I then searched for um, Joylin Josamu. And what I discovered is, is that she was a CEO of a company called Maru Cyber Connect. NPC is non-profit company. So the next thing was, I went to the tool. Um, Screen. Um, sorry, I just need to launch the tool if you'll bear with me. Um, I'm sorry, I just need to launch the tool, guys. My apologies. Um, I think it's really interesting as we get into like these little details about the step by step that um, understanding the sequence that, that Ray went through in one story, just for you to start to think about how could this apply to your own stories in your own communities. It's one of the things that we have a little bit of time for when Ray is done with looking at this particular, explaining these tools, to start asking questions about how could this apply to you? Even if you're doing a story that has nothing to do with the lottery, a lot of the same um, uh, perspective, the kind of questioning, the kind of curiosity, as well as the tools themselves can be applied in different situations. So please, if you'd like to come on, just let me know in the chat and we'll bring you on in just a minute after Ray does this part of his presentation. Okay, so, so now, so now we go, we go to the tool. So Anton has explained to you about exploring the results. You can download the data in CF, CFV form for the grants by the years, for those who, who know how to work with data. So I went to the tool and here is a thing called B2B search tool. Now, previously you could just access the tool without any problem whatsoever. With, with Poppia, you've now got to sign up. And I had to make a decision there. Um, they want your ID number, they want certain stuff. So I've got nothing to hide. You know, I'm, pu I'm publishing stories in my own name anyway. Um, I would urge you to sign up because otherwise you don't get access to this tool. And, and, and now, I'm going to go to uh, Becky. If you could just um, there's the URL. It's it's b2bhint.com. But the easier way to get it in, to get you through the tool. Now, what I want to say to you guys is what I want to say to you is this tool is not only for the lottery. 
it's for any story that you're working on. If you want to know company directors, you want to know the history of a company. So here we go to Maru Cyber Connect. And what we've got, so she, she was the CEO. And there's the company number. It, it was incorporated, it was registered in 2011. It's a nonprofit and there is its address and it's in business. Now, what this tool is now giving me is who the directors are. And by a process of, if you keep working through it, so I want to have a look at Joy Lin Josamu. And what I'm seeing is that she's a director of these companies. Um, Mimshat, Luteri, Fulu, Quacha Development, Nara Vision. And what I literally did is company by company, I then went to the tool and for example, Quacha is one of the companies. And, 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 and it's under two names. It's under Quacha Development NPC and Quacha Development. And what I discovered is this company got under the arts and culture. Now, remember they were in Waterfall in Gauteng. But for this project that we're looking at, they got 1.278 for a project in the Eastern Cape for arts and culture. Now, Maru Cyber Connect is a company that does um, computer training, computer literacy. So the question we need to ask here is why are they getting money under arts and culture, which is where a lot of the scams are happening, under art and culture in the Eastern Cape? Um, now, the reason this, again, just to explain that in 2018, 19, they published it, they took it down, and then they gave the information to parliament. Also, what we discovered with the 2017, 18, we had a real problem with this tool, is uh, in 2017, 18, we had what they published, and we also had what they gave to parliament. And those two lists didn't match. There was a, there's a half a billion, there's a story there. If anyone's looking for a story, they're welcome to contact me. I'll give you the details. I'm overwhelmed with stories. There's a half a billion rand difference to what they told parliament. They dispensed and what they, so the one that they published which would have been out of the annual financial report was 500 million Rand more than what they told parliament they dispensed. Um, so let me go back to um, the, 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 there was another one called um, There's another company called Nara Vision. So each time that I look at a company, what I'm also looking for, and, and, and by the way, this office address is common across these companies. So, you know, it's all in the details. And, and here we have the introduction of someone by the name of Fatima Chawala. What I discovered was joining Jasamu, Fatima Chawalu, there's an Isaac Josamo, is her husband. And this guy, Isaac Lutere. Um, I, I've got a tool that if you're on a LinkedIn page, I've got a web browser extension, there it is. Um, which when you click on that, it'll give you the email address that someone registered for LinkedIn. And what I was able to see is 
that Ms. Jusam, Pastor Joylin Jusam, very controversial church, by the way, that she is a pastor in, um, the email address that she used to register, the name Luteri appeared in it. And from that, I was able to fathom that Isaac Luteri is a, is a family member. I can't say what she is. She's either a cousin, a brother, a very close relative. It has to be to have, because that's her maiden name. And then with Isaac Luteri, what we're looking at now, my apologies. Is a director of all of those companies got lottery funding. And so, so I literally just worked through them one by one by one, clicking on getting the details of the company, going back to the tool and searching. And I eventually, with that concert, came up. They got <laughs> over a period of about 18 months. This is a syndicate we're looking at. Three main people. And then uh, he's a main member of, of the syndicate. Um, Fatima Chiwala and Josamo. And then there are other people who are directors and they keep moving directorships around. But what I looked for is were they directors at the time the lottery paid the money? Um, Now, with NaraVision, just to show you very quickly as well, one of the ways, the other thing that the tool gives you is if you go to a company, and this is a free tool, if you go to a company, it will tell you related companies buy offices. So every single, except for that one, those got funding. Now, the free tool does not give you ID numbers. ID numbers are key, by the way. And at some stage, if you're deep into an investigation, I would recommend that you go to Wendy's or, or one of those. You can pay per view because you can start searching by ID numbers and you could also start searching for property by ID numbers. And, and that's really important to trace where the money's going, where are their properties? Um, so that, that company got lottery money, that company got lottery money, that one did, 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 and 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 so and so it goes. What I also discovered is by the way, Joylene Jusama is doing a lot of a lot of work um, for many municipalities. Um, she was employed at UJ very briefly, and I'm actually looking at a story there. There, there. She went to UJ, I think, with an eight million rand grant. She didn't stay very long. She got a payment of half a million rand, and UJ took over the project. I'm not exactly sure what happened there. But here, under these show malls, and once you go into the paid for CRPC tools, um, you'll find a lot more. But what I'm doing is I'm going back into the history of this, of this particular company. Um, so there it was incorporated, June 2014. And you can also tell the incorporation date, it's the incorporation date by the company's registration. Now, the, this guy, Christian Hoes, if you come across the name of Christian Hoes, so Christian Hoes works for a company called, and there is no suggestion that they are doing anything illegal, but they, he, he is, I think, a director. He certainly works, and I think he's a director of a company called Shelf, Shelf Warehouse. If you go to their, their, their website, you'll see um, registered today by a company. Now, the company you buy, the older it is, the more expensive it is because it starts having a track record of being around longer. 
um, the more recently, the fresher out of the box, the cheaper it is. But what you've seen here is Christian Chos, who was one of the people who reg originally registered the company. He resigned in January 2019. And on the same day, Isaac Lutero was added. On the very day that the people set it up, um, King Kim Helene Duplessis, so I, Anton and I recognize these names immediately, um, is another one from is another one from uh, the the shelf company um, that sold the shelf company. She was added. So on the day they all resigned, these people are added. Adele Fontonda is another. This address keeps changing. And, and you can literally track back on the company. You can literally track back on the company's history. This is really a powerful tool, you know, and if you don't have the resources, um, you access it here. That's where I got into there, the annual report. Here is a CIP search tool. So again, you've got to register. So imagine that what they are doing is They are using Popia to protect your, your information. But they're asking you for some very personal information. So, so now, now that I'm in, I'm going to search. You get 100 free searches a day. Um, when you search, we are going to search by, you have the ability to search by, let me just bring it down here. Apologies. So you can search by enterprise name if you know the enterprise. Uh, sometimes you might just put in, if you don't know the company's full name, um, So you, you can search with keywords, the enterprise number, which is we've already got enterprise numbers from the previous two, where we've got the registration or the director's ID if you have it. So I'm going to search here for enterprise name and I'm going to search for So Ray, I'm going to just ask, as you do this, this last sort of sample with the tool, I do want to ask everybody who has had some questions raised by what we're seeing here to, we have this sort of last few minutes at the end of today's session for you to talk directly with Ray and with Anton. Um, I do see some questions coming in already. Ray, do you want to wrap up with this tool before we go to Q&A? Yeah, if I may, please. So on, on this, there's the House of Mercy. And I'm going to click on House of Mercy. So they're the company, all the company's details. Director's details. Now, this is a very interesting one. That is not an ID number. Isaac Luteri is Malawian. Um, and that's what the MA stands for. Fatima Chuala is Malawian. What you will also sometimes find is something that says FN, foreign national. So then you know they're not a South African. But what they do do is you don't get the full ID number on, 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 on this freemium version. Um, so is this company current? So they, 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 their returns for 2021 are outstanding. 
this one is very interesting is, so here are the enterprise details. Um, she was added, she was added, she changed, he was added, she resigned. So you can see what's happening here. Um, and quite literally what then happened, and I'm gonna finish off now, Becky. Um, is let me go back to, Trying to, sorry guys, you know, you'd think that after, after everything, um, we would by now have know how to do all this stuff. I'm trying to enlarge my screen so I can get out of this. Um, I tell you what, Becky, if you want to go to questions and I will come back just to wrap it once I've, oh, there it is. Yeah, so I would I would really like to open to anybody who hasn't put their question and I know that um, some people have come in and introduced yourself since we got started at the very beginning. I see Belinda here from Sunday Times and Times Live. Masego, I know you have a question for us from Grand Up News. And I see Ben, Liesl, Neil Uckert, um, and anybody else whose name I haven't shouted out. I'm glad that you're here. Let's make use best use of this time either for yourself or a story that you're thinking about working on, how you can apply these tools. You want to just like toss things out. So Becky, these can I just finish this off? Yeah, um, I do want to let you know, Ray, one of the specific questions that we have um, from Masego says, this is deeply fascinating work. And the question for you is, what's the name of the extension or the tool that you use to get those email addresses from LinkedIn? It's a, also a tool specific question. Okay, uh, sorry. So I just want you to finish off if I may. Um, sure. So what we literally found, and I can't make it bigger, unfortunately, um, is we then joined the company uh, through CRPC. We could see where they were current directors and where they'd been directors and resigned. And we were able to show is even where they resigned, they were directors at the time that the money was paid. These are other members of the syndicate. We then looked at each other and the registration, the, the registration dates. And what, what we did discover is in many cases within weeks or months of them signing up for a buying a company, a shelf company, they then applied and were successful to get money from the lottery. And, and, and one thing you should always look at with any company that gets a tender, that gets a grant, not only with lottery, do they have a Facebook page? Do they have a website? So out of these eight companies, only one had a website. The rest of them had no web presence whatsoever and yet had received millions of rands. Um, and this is the story that was finally published. Um, if, if you guys would like, um, that's my WhatsApp, WhatsApp number, that's my email address. I am more than willing to assist anyone who, who needs help. You know, the more people reporting this story, the better. So. So the tool that I do use, Becky, I'd have to show it. Um, it's this is that tool for finding email addresses with LinkedIn. Is that the one? Yeah. So if you have a look at it, what it is, it's very small, and I'm struggling to make it bigger but it's a magnifying glass. It's a magnifying glass with an envelope in the middle. Is that and it is, an extent, is that an, ex, is that like a Chrome extension though, or what? what Chrome type of... extension. Okay. Um, so I'm using the freemium version and it is called, I'm trying to see what it is called. Um, so you get a limited amount of search money for me. So if you just um, bring any, browse any LinkedIn, if you, depending what you are, whether you're Firefox, 
Chrome or you've got um, you 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 you've got a fruit machine, an Apple machine. Just go to your your um, shop, your your app shop, and just Google for um, LinkedIn search tool. Okay. And you quite um, literally, when you go to LinkedIn, um, it's a very useful tool. Is um, I know that we're going to be sending out um, a list of some of the resources and possibly we can get the specific name of the one that you prefer, Ray, and include yeah, that. I just want to show quickly how it works because I think it's a bit... So there I am. By the way, you used to in Windeed and then be able to get contact details. Um, the popular law makes allowance for genuine journalism purposes. Um, they have now blocked us. So I click on it. And what it's given me is the email address. It's given you, it's giving you, there's my phone number, there's my email address. So if people have registered the phone number, it'll give you. If, and it will also give you that email address. And that is invaluable when you've got to search for people to give a right to reply. Um, so, yeah. I think, I wasn't question? sure if I saw it correctly. Is that called Contact Out? Is that the name of the extension? Contact Out, sorry. It's called okay. Contact okay. Out. Sorry, and what you would have to do, you saw it then, I missed that. Just go to your app shop, the Chrome shop, um, the, the Apple shop, Firefox has got one. Oh, there it is. Um, and just search for a download. It's, it's a browser extension. And when you are on someone's, you go to their LinkedIn page, you click on that and it'll give you the list. You may have to sign in in the beginning. I don't remember if I signed in. Okay, super. Um, just put a last shout out for anybody who's got any specific questions. So much that you all covered. I mean, I think that watching everything here is really um, interesting. I see a hand going up from Liesl. Liesl, I'm going to try and, oops, but then also disappeared. Maybe she was lost. <laughs> Maybe Lisa was logging out. Um, if there's anybody who does want to come on, putting up your electronic hand is great. I can pull you on. And also, if you just want to type in the chat. One of the things that I did want to just um, um, ask you both about a little bit as, as we're getting ready to wrap up today is just the sort of the impact. I mean, I think it's really impressive to look at all the things in this short amount of time. This is, these are investigations that came out over many years of work. And particularly that quote that you shared, Anton, from President Ramaphosa of even like at that, at that sort of level, looking to the journalists to be doing this work. I'm wondering if, if either, if both or either of you could talk a little bit about the impact that has come out from actually doing these stories and what you see moving forward from here. Um, Rebecca, I'll, I'll start off. I think the, the it's frustrating because like in the previous session, it was uh, asked how many of the money, like what was recovered and also the follow-up one, how many people have been arrested? Well, it's easy in both cases, zero. Um, but we do believe, I mean, we are optimists. We do believe it will lead to arrest. We do believe that uh, the money, uh, at least some of it would be recovered. But I think it's more what we're hoping for, I specifically, is for a, for a better future. A better future for journalism, a better future for communities. And I, when the NLC spokesperson, Nvuo Mafela, came past the offices in, I think in 2019, end of 2019, he was then about a month or two in his job. And he came past there and I showed him the tool and I was excited. I said, listen, imagine, I mean, a tool like this, you could have so many sort of eyes on the ground, people checking and making sure that the money goes to good uh, courses. That's what I would like to see, you know, where people are sort of checking and that making sure that it doesn't just get lost, like the examples have shown. Unfortunately, NLC went the other way. They tried to, within the next year or two, try their best to by even threatening us with uh, saying, well, they, they consider locking us up if we continue 
sort of uh, reporting on this, which is sad. That's not uh, a future I think any one of us envisage. We, we want a, a transparent and accountable society. Hopefully, what we're doing now with tools like this, it is a step in that direction. We say, no, you're not going to be able to hide it. Um, Chimbukwe drop-in center, be sure. A journalist will pop in there, will drop in. Um, and uh, we'll see whether that 10 million uh, then put to good uh, uh, causes. Uh, so yes, uh, I'm, I'm optimistic, but I have to, it's a choice you make. So on impact, as a direct result of this, the Hawks have a special, you have set up a special unit, which is concentrating on lottery only. Um, early in the, was it earlier this year, or I kind of morphs with COVID, um, President Ramaphosa um, instructed the SIU to investigate. Um, so, so he signed a proclamation for the SIU to investigate all the lottery from, from so he said a specified year, but anything, I, they, they're basically looking at the lottery. I know. So look, we reporters, um, one of the key things that we got along the way were, were bank statements that were leaked to us because bank statements tell amazing stories. But what we can't do is go into a bank and demand bank statements. The SAU and the Hawks can and do and have, and they are sitting with hundreds and hundreds of bank statements. It's a huge investigation. Um, I believe that if they carry on the way that they are doing, investigating project by project, it'll never end. This, this is what poker, um, organized Crime Act should be used for, because what you're looking here is organized crime and money laundering on a grand scale. And, and there, there are so many different ways that the scams are happening. Big infrastructure projects um, is another way where money is going, where, where, where we know that the COO of the lottery an NPO that his wife was involved in a few months after it was set up, God, I think it was almost 5 million Rand, but it's in the big infrastructure projects. His brother, companies related to him, have been involved in those old age homes that have never been finished in those rehabs. And it's very hard to find out because if you ask the lottery, they look, it's reached a stage where they don't even answer us, when they don't even acknowledge that we've asked questions. But I think the way that this has worked is we've taken the data and we've gone into the field. You know, so some, some, some of those, um, look for signs. It's a bit like fact-checking. Look for signs. Look for senior around. Some of those projects have got boards on them saying who's involved in the project, who the engineers are, that sort of thing. You know, it's, it's, it's like a big jigsaw. The tool does the heavy lifting. You've still got to go out there and do the journalism. And I can tell you the scariest thing about this is we don't know what we don't know. We only know what we have found. And yet we constantly are finding more and more. We now know how to look for it. Um, may I? Becky, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my email address here. Super, thanks. Yeah, I mean, Ray had mentioned, you know, to, to reach out and contact him if you've got questions, need follow-up, need some support. And I would encourage you, oops, Ray, you're putting that privately to me. Please make sure you're putting it to all, all um, panelists and attendees um, with your email address. Um, anybody who's got any last takeaway, something that really sort of resonated with you here today, please go ahead and drop that in the chat so everybody else can see it and your panelists as well. Um, and the panelists as well, I see from Skype saying very informative presentation, Raymond, Raymond and Anton, sound and structured investigative methodology and love the tools presented. Keep on fighting the good fight. I think that is like pretty much sums up what has happened here. We've had really great tools used in a way that really helps support um, a different um, and better future 
for everyone, right? And um, I would like to ask Anton and Ray to just give us a final thought in parting. Um, but I also just want to say to um, to everyone to please do continue to um, take this work, these sort of seeds that were planted here today. Don't think that you have to do four years worth of planning and reporting after watching one session, mm -hmm. but to see what little piece you can take away to help further your reporting and to ask questions a little bit differently moving forward. And I do wanna say like a huge, huge thank you to all of you who have come out live and especially to our presenters, Anton and Ray and to everybody at Open Up. This is a very co-collaborative project that has gone over, over a long time and we really welcome we're really excited to see what happens, how you, all of you start to take what's been built so far and continue to use it um, in your own stories. So um, let's just hear final thoughts from Ray and Anton. Uh, I think mine will be short. Uh, just thanking all the sort of data crunches, people from Open Up. All the, uh, you know, I think they sit there in front of their screens and it's just data and it's sort of names and, and figures and they think, okay, well, you know, but. Uh, you know, eventually it becomes personal. You, it actually can change lives. Uh, please do it. It just makes our lives so much easier. Uh, you know, these tools open up some other worlds for us, and uh, we do appreciate that. So, the way the way to start is go to the tool and start searching first for an area. Put that name in. Use the keyword search. Go and look at the money that people got. Look, look for really big amounts they got. If you're looking at a school getting 300 grand, don't bother about that because the lottery basically gives 300 grand to schools, clumps, and they rotate it. But when you suddenly, I've got a school in the middle of nowhere that I'm looking at that got 5 million rand for a science lab. You know, it's that sort of thing. You've got to get on the ground. You've got to go and have a look. But Google is your friend. Facebook is your friend. You know, you are using tools on a daily. You are using platforms on a daily basis that are actually very good investors of tools. Um, and just to just to end it off, I've dropped my I've dropped my WhatsApp. It's also my phone number and my email address. If anyone wants help, if you've met, feel free to contact me because, you know, the more people who are doing this, the better. You know, Anton and I have been the sole flat catchers for this and particularly me. I've been, me and Grown Up, we've been sued, we've been reported, we've been, we've just put our heads down and carried on going. So, yeah, that's my, that's my invitation. And the last thing to repeat, the tools do the heavy lifting, go and do the journalism. Thank you so much for that. And I think that having that, knowing that you have that support, I know some of you are here from some of the biggest news organizations in the country, and some of you are independent freelancers, whoever you are, you need some support, you need some help with doing uh, tough investigative work. And hopefully that these tools here today and the presenters have given you some ideas for how to move forward. Once again, thanks so much to our presenters. Thanks to everybody at Open Up, and thanks to all of you for coming here live today, learning how to report on the lottery and also any other investigations that these tools may be useful for. We will see you on Open Up's next webinar. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. Bye-bye. Cheers. Thanks, guys.